Hey now, what have we got here? I don't know, it's pretty interesting. But anyway, I got a request to do a video ranking my favorite Swiss Army knife tools, or maybe my least favorite Swiss Army knife tools. So in typical Swiss Army Grizz fashion, I'm not gonna prepare in any way, just gonna completely wing it. I got a pretty good idea where I'm going with this, but I could get thrown for a loop. I'm going to try, let's say, 10 tools. I'm not going to do all of them. I mean, if you don't, uh, you know, assign multiple to each, there's like 16 individual tools on here. And then you add the multi-functions and you get many more. But let's, let's have a look at it, man. Anyway, let's start out with my least used tool on any Swiss Army knife. And uh, I'm not talking the scale tools, accessories, pens, you know, all that stuff is just add-on stuff. Talking about what you get in a basic Swiss Army knife. Yeah, some there's extra stuff in here. I'm using a Swiss champ because it has all the tools in it. But, you know, I'm not going to go over every little friggin' tool. I'm not going to rank the key ring. You know, some guys put a lot of value on the key ring. I don't care. It's the key ring. Who cares? I, I Frankly, I think they look better without it. But I like carrying them with the key ring. So I'm screwed either way. Anyway, so let me see. What is my 10, number 10 tool? So my least used in my favorite 10 tools. I'm going with the reamer. The reamer is, you know, some guys will say they use the reamer all the time, and that's great. Uh, I just don't need it that much. Uh, the type of stuff I do, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't come out of the quiver that often. Uh, it's one of the arrows that stays in the quiver, as one might say if they were talking archery. But, I mean, it's still a very useful tool. And, you know, I, I definitely prefer having it there because it's the kind of thing that when you need to pierce something and you don't want to break your blade, the reamer is where it's at. You know, I don't know how many people are drilling, doing bushcraft and all that stuff. But if you are, then good for you. Keep it to yourself or in the comments. Um, number nine, the pen blade. Frankly, uh, yeah, I'd rather have a nail file or a clip blade. I like how the clip blade looks. Pen blade's just a duplicate, small down version of the main spear blade. Therefore, I'd rather have the clip blade or ideally for what I'm gonna carry. I like having the nail file. I play bass guitar. Keeping my uh, nails trimmed is important to me, especially dealing with all these knives, man. My th thumbnails get busted up and having a file is always handy. So number nine, the pen blade. All right, now it's gonna get started. Number eight. This might surprise some people, but the fish scaler. Now, uh, I've used this many times to measure other knives. Uh, so the ruler is fine. Short, short. But uh, I mean, if you were in a pinch and really need a longer ruler, obviously you can lay it out and make hash marks and mark out as long a rule as you need on a plank of wood or something. Not that that wouldn't take time, but you could do it if you were in some unusual circumstance where a ruler was going to save your ass then I guess it's great having one. As far as a fishing tool, I don't really use them. But what I tend to do with these is they tend to be the catch-all for when I just need a metal pokey thing. I don't know how to describe it better than that. Sometimes you don't quite need a chisel. You don't quite need a pry bar. You just need to poke at something with something hard enough not to bend. And you don't want to do it with your blade for risk of breaking your blade. That's where this comes in. If you want to stir something with it, that's great. You know, if you just got to get like a... Uh, you know, something out of a hole or something like that gives you a little reach. Uh, basically, I just call it a metal pokey thing. Always useful to have a metal pokey thing. I mean, that's the main part of why we carry knives. Started out with wood pokey things, sticks, went to sharpened rocks for sh sharper pokey things, and eventually bronze and iron and then steel. But it's all just the evolution of the much sought after pokey thing. All right. So I think that was number eight. So number seven, the pliers. Um, I love the pliers. I love the design of them. I love having them, but the truth is they take up a lot of real estate. And I uh, just, you know, they're, 
they don't, they don't, you know, people think pliers, they think they're going to be able to like uh, handle nuts and bolts with them and stuff, even though pliers are not for tightening nuts and bolts or loosening them, but they can get the job done in a pinch. Uh, mostly what these are for is fingertip pr protection. You know, if you got to grab a little hot something or, or you have to pick up something that's dangerous, yeah, that's perfect for that. Uh, they'll even work as tweezers in a pinch if you, if you really got a big old, uh, a big old splinter jammed in you pretty good. They'll get it out. That's for sure. Uh, I've literally never used the crimping tool. Never. Uh, I appreciate that it's there. I love when they throw extra utility into an un otherwise unused space, but just have never had cause to use it. And I'm an electrician and a fisherman, but I, you know, we don't spend nearly as much time crimping stuff as uh, Victoria Knox seems to think. Uh, I think in Europe, especially in Europe wiring systems, uh, crimped splices are much more common. In the States, we use what's called the Edison splice, which we twist them together and put a wire cap on them. Uh, it's a whole different system. Uh, with stranded wires, they tend to crimp them, and then having a crimp is great. So at number, what was that, seven? I will call it seven, the pliers. Number six, the magnifying glass. Of course, this is the modern magnifying glass. I mean, take your pick. I got all the magnifying glasses. I'm not going over to my other shelf because it'll take forever, but I got the Wenger magnifying glasses. I got them all. But the thing is, uh, they come in handy. Uh, most often I use them for reading tank stamps on knives, looking for mint marks on coins, stuff like that. And I've also used them for, you know, a few solar hits here and there out on a relaxing day out on the, in the wilderness, you know, with your smoke of choice. Just uh, you use that a bright sunny day. There's nothing more fun than lighting up a doobie with a uh, with with a magnifying glass. Or starting a raging fire if you're a fire bug. Who knows? But it's fun to have. I enjoy having it. Not a must have, but I definitely enjoy having it, and I appreciate that it's there. Okay, number five. This countdown is going faster than I anticipated. But number five, we're going with the corkscrew. Um, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It ain't really a Swiss Army knife if it don't have a corkscrew. I mean, come on now. When you picture the original Swiss Army knife, you picture a corkscrew on that bad bear. And of course, I'm kidding. And of course, I carry knives with Phillips all the time. But, I mean, come on. If you don't got a corkscrew in your collection, you're lacking, bro. So, get a corkscrew. Um... It, it, it just comes down again to, you know, people look, when you ascribe a name to something, which Victoria Knox often does, people get turned off to the name. So if this was just on there and hadn't been called a corkscrew, people find a million uses to it. But people hear, oh, I don't need a corkscrew, and they never try to use it. Great for untying knots, great for storing stuff, like the various fire accessories that are available for them, the fireflies and the tinder, corkscrew tinders that that fly in there, the little corkscrew, the, this tool and the various other tools that Victorinox makes for it. Fantastic. You get the little pocket to store the needle in. Uh, you know, corkscrew is awesome. Speaking of which, move on to another knife. Then at number four, the square Phillips. And if I must begrudgingly include a Phillips, even though it has no right being on a Swiss Army knife, not any respecting Swiss Army knife anyway, not that this isn't a beautiful little knife that's uh, about to head off to my friend in Holland. But uh, I just figured I'd squeeze it in one more video before it hits the mail. Um, what was I going to say? The uh, Square Phillips. Outstanding. Got a can key on it. Never going to use it. I, they, I don't know if they've made cans like that in the last 40 years. But very cool nonetheless. And if you got a round screwdriver... I guess I feel sorry for you, but, you, you know, it, it'll get the job done just the same. So, at number four, the backside Phillips. Number three, the inline Phillips. The obviously superior Phillips. Uh, very cool. Very fantastic. Gotta love it. And at number two, the scissors. The skizzers. Now... If you don't know what to do with the Victorinox scissors, I guess you've never been to a fish lot. But uh, you can have plenty of fun 
uh, do some things out with a little pair of scissors. But uh, if not, you can cut a, a little string off your shirt or whatever you got to do. Having a pair of scissors is excellent. You can even trim your nails with them in a pinch if you really have to. So we're down to number two. Now, number one. Now, we all know what number one is. I mean, it's, it's the part that makes it a knife. It's the part that makes it a Swiss Army knife. It's the part we all use the most. And I can't live a single day without. And of course, that is the parcel hook. I mean, look at that bad bear. It's a beauty of form and function. It's a hook. I mean, yeah, you're not going to carry packages around. We're not uh, 1890s newsboys carrying a bundle of newspapers wrapped in twine or anything, but you can carry all kinds of stuff with it. Works as a handle for tightening things up. There's a ton of uses you can use the hook for and bam. And I know people are going to love, agree with me that that is the number one tool. And if I got to go to a number zero, I guess we'll give it up for the blade. I mean, the blade is obviously the one. Whoa, forgot about this one. Hey, Elijah William Brown, if you're out there and lost your knife at a TSA checkpoint sometime between 2010 and 2020, uh, hit me up and I'll, I'll happily send your knife back. But for now, it's mine. But the main blade is the main function on the knife. Uh, we live in an unfortunate time for knives. It's a great time for knives. There's so much innovation out there. But there's so much focus in the, the collector community and the casual user community on these magical super steels. Your SK455s, your JG69s, your 920-420-666s or whatever. And they don't mean a boatload of crap if you're only using them to cut open the next package your next knife is. Uh, you know, you've got guys demoing them, chopping through frying pans with their knives and stuff. Like, yeah, I can remember all the times I'm out, like, uh, you know, on a camping trip. I was like, you know what would save my ass right now if I could cut my frying pan in half with my knife? That would be great. But, no, I get it. I, I would like to see Victorinox do a premium steel. But I don't think that's ever going to happen, at least not anytime soon. I don't want to hear about those damn steel. That's like, it, that's a, the gimmick of the highest order of gimmicks. But especially when the one blade is damn steel and the rest of the steel is all standard stainless. But there's nothing wrong with a Torinox steel. It's proved the test of time and it will continue to do so for many years to come. And that's why you'll find Swiss Army knives in the pockets of people that use them. Uh... You know, not just on the shelves of people that collect them, uh, as you will with many fancy knives that people buy because of super tough steel and then are too afraid to break. So they won't take them anywhere and they sit, they carry them in their pocket at work. And then if they go out on the weekends, they take a cheaper knife with them. Doesn't make any sense. Um, and don't don't even at me. I know there's going to be the guy going, oh, no, I use my bowler 666, whatever. Don't care. It's silly. But uh I doubt the difference in steel has saved anybody's life. Uh, if you're in a life life or death situation, you're just happy to have a knife, I'm sure. But anyway, there you go. There's 13 minutes on me talking about stuff I talk about all the time anyway. But the real important thing, uh, if you're still here, I really want one of those 1897 replicas when they come out. I got on the collecting just after, you know, a little bit after the... Uh, the uh, 125th anniversary of the 1890. So I really want, and the officer's knives from my heart anyway. I, I love the soldier's knives, but the officer's knives, the little red wonders are where my heart's at with these. I really want one. I got to make that happen. So I should have snuck a little preview of what they got on their website. But so basically what I'm asking is nobody buy one when they come out. I need to get one. I need one or my life will be meaningless. Please let me get one. Swiss Army Knife Gods, I pray to thee. Anyway, thank you. Peter Grizz, out.